Okay, I'm doing my room scan. My materials. Nothing on the wall or the ceiling or the floor. Or my patient. I'm Carly. I am a student at the University of South Alabama in the MSN PMP program. I'm in the um, class for advanced nursing assessment. And this is my patient, Austin Martin. Do you consent to me sending this into my instructors for grading purposes? Yes. Perfect. Okay. And this is an abdominal assessment. So before we begin, do you have any areas of concern that I should be aware of before assessing? No. Perfect. And then, have you recently emptied your bladder? Yes. Perfect. Okay. I've prepared this place for you. I'm going to be standing at the right side of you. Um, if you'll just lay supine, which is just kind of flat on your back, I've got a pillow there for comfort and a sheet for draping purposes. If you will um, raise your shirt up. Well, I've got the drape here for draping purposes. Raise your shirt up to the nipple line and um, pull this sheet over you. I'm going to go wash my hands for hand hygiene for protection of you. Perfect. So, if you will raise your shirt up to the nipple line, yep, just about the nipple line of you, and then assist me in kind of lowering your pants down just so I can get the full inspection of your abdomen. I'll also be listening to the femoral arteries, which are kind of at the crease. So, that's perfect. And arms at the side. So, first, I'm just going to inspect your abdomen, which is just with my eyes only. Um, the contour is actually flat. I do see some aortic pulsations in the epigastric region, which that's fine and normal. Um, I don't see any bulges, no masses, no hernias. The umbilicus is centrally located and inverted. The skin is slightly paler than your extremities, but that's more than likely due to sun exposure. Um, I see no other or abnormalities, no peristalsis nothing of concern there um, and the skin is intact next I'm going to move into auscultation so that involves me listening with my stethoscope first I'm going to be listening with the diaphragm of my stethoscope this is just to hear bowel sounds so what am I listening for it's like a high-pitched gurgling sound that would be something normal to hear um, for it to be considered normoactive which is just a, a bowel sounds heard every five to 34, every minute. So five to 34 sounds every minute. I'm gonna listen for 15 seconds in each quadrant, beginning with the right upper, left upper, right lower, left lower in a systematic fashion. Um, so the high pitched gurgling sounds is the ones that I'm gonna be listening for. If I don't hear any sounds at all or lower sounds in normal, so hypoactive, that would be anything under um, that could be indicative of peritonitis and you would also have some other symptoms as well along with that. Absence bowel sounds, which is being I hear absolutely nothing. I would have to listen for an additional two to five minutes before um, considering you to be absent and that can be indicative of um, an ileus, which is just no movement passing through. Hyperactive, which is anything over 34 a minute, would be indicative of something like diarrhea. Um, so I'm going to listen with the diaphragm first. In the right upper quadrant. Left upper. hear your belly growling. <laughs> Left lower. And right lower. Perfect.
perfect. So you have normal active vowel sounds there. If I heard a high pitched tinkling sound, that can be indicative of an early bowel obstruction, which I did not hear. Next, I'm gonna listen with the bell of my stethoscope to the arteries. So um, what I'm gonna be listening for is what we call a brewy. That is a turbulent sound going through a narrowed spot of the vessel. So that can be indicative of atherosclerotic disease, something like that. So I'm gonna be listening for those. First beginning in the epigastric area, just in, right in the middle, um, to the aorta. No breweries noted there. Now I'm gonna branch off just to the right and the left, still at the above the umbilicus, but kind of right in the middle. your right renal and your left renal next I'm going to listen to the iliac arteries which are below the umbilicus still kind of um, branched off of the right and the left of the umbilicus so right iliac and left Next, I'm going to listen to the femoral arteries, which are kind of right in the crease of your groin. And that was your left femoral, so no breweries were noted there. Next, I'm going to move on to the um, percussion aspect of my abdominal assessment. At the end of this percussion as, um, assessment, I'm going to percuss the costal vertebral angle, which will involve you sitting up. Um, and we can do that all right here. So first, um, in order to do the percussion aspect, I'm going to take my left non-dominant hand mostly the middle finger. I'm going to put my palmar surfaces to your abdomen. My hands may be a little bit colder than what you're expected, so I'll give you some time to warm up to them. And strike my middle finger with my le uh, right middle finger as well to kind of um, hear some, it's kind of like a thud. What I'm actually listening for is timpani, which is like a drum, an area sound. What I don't, or what I could also hear is dullness, and that is indicative of any underlying masses, organs, fecal matter, hernias, anything like that, um, that I'll be listening for first. So I'm gonna start in the right upper, work to the left upper, right lower, left lower in a systematic manner. I do hear um, timpani all throughout these three quadrants, so the right upper, the left upper, and the right lower quadrant. I do hear some dullness in the left lower, which could be indicative of some fecal matter sitting there. Um, that is the sigmoid colon. So next I'm going to um, percuss for your liver area, so the margins of your liver. Um, first, I'm going to begin at the bottom region of you, kind of like in this right lower quadrant, mid-clavicularly. So that just means in the middle of your clavicle, which is your collarbone. <clears throat> I'm going to continue to per per percuss upwards um, from an area of timpani to an area of dullness. I'll then mark it and then also measure it. Um, so with that, I'm going to percuss upwards and then I'll begin mid-clavicularly right at the nipple line and percuss downwards to percuss to see where this organ actually is. So I'm gonna find an area of tympani and then go upwards.
A normal litter size for an adult male like you is anywhere from six to 12 centimeters. So now I'm gonna start midclavicularly at the nipple line and work my way downwards from an area of resonance to shifts to dullness in between the um, intercostal margins or intercostal spaces. So this I'm getting seven and a half centimeters, which is normal size for an adult male of your size. Next, I'm going to percuss um, for splenomegaly. So what I should hear is between the sixth and seventh rib is tympani throughout that. If I hear dullness, that can be indicative of splenomegaly. So on this left side of you, I'm gonna go mid-axillary, just kind of posterior to that mid-axillary line. Thank you. And I'm going to percuss, kind of beginning at the third intercostal margin, and percuss, percuss downwards. Okay, so I've reached the costal margin, and I've heard timpani all throughout, specifically through the sixth and seventh rib. Um, next, I'm going to move on to, let's see, percussion. next I'm going to move on to percussion of the costal vertebral angle. So this is going to involve you sitting up, um, for you to sit up, yes, uh, I'm going to ask you to sit forward. This is still going to be raised in the back of you. Perfect. So during this time, what I'm going to be doing is placing the ulnar surfaces of my palm, um, or my palmar surfaces and taking the ulnar surface of my right dominant hand and percussing it against the back of you. So it's going to be right below the 12th rib on both sides, your right and your left, right next to the transverse processes of your vertebrae. Okay. And this shouldn't be painful. If it is, it can be indicative of pyelonephritis, which is like a kidney infection, along with some other um, clinical signs and symptoms. Okay. So you're going to hear a loud thud. Any pain or tenderness? Okay, perfect. Great. You can lay that down. That concludes the percussion aspect of my um, assessment. Next, I'm going to move on to palpation. So palpation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out lightly palpating and then I'll go deep. So <clears throat> light palpation, I, we do this to feel for any um, ridges or tightness along your abdomen. We can also palpate whenever we move into deeper is your organs. So kidneys, liver, spleen, sometimes the spleen, um, masses, hernias, anything of such like that. So first I'm going to start out with light and it's just kind of a dipping method on each quadrant and we'll move forward. Tell me if you experience any pain or tenderness, okay? That was the right upper. Lower, right lower, <clears throat> no pain or tenderness, okay, and of note your abdomen is very warm and dry. <laughs> Next I'm going to move on to deep palpation which involves putting two hands on you, so one is going to be flat and I'm going to be using the other one to push further in as well, okay? That was the right upper, and we're gonna go to the left upper. And you did say you emptied your bladder recently? Oops. Okay, I feel no distinction there. <laughs> No pain or tenderness. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is try to palpate your liver's edge along with your spleen. So the liver is going to be on this right side 
kind of mid clavicularly I'm gonna go down to kind of this right upper quadrant of your abdomen I prefer the hooking technique um, in order to palpate their liver's edge what I should feel is a liver that is nice and smooth no lobularness to it no ridges to it it should just be nice and smooth okay so I'm gonna put my hands right up underneath uh, this costal margin right at the ribs and you're gonna take a deep breath in what it's gonna do is displace this liver against my fingers perfect and you can exhale no pain or tenderness notice with that okay your liver's edge did feel smooth sorry I'm having to dig my hands up in deep it does feel nice and smooth so that's normal um, I didn't feel any ridges or it feeling enlarged for any reason. Next, I'm going to move on to your spleen. So what I'm going to do is actually take my uh, right hand and put it underneath the posterior aspect of your back. Um, I'm going to kind of lift up and you're just going to take a deep breath in as well as I'm going to um, put my fingers kind of right next to your ribs on this left side, um, mid clavicularly as well and see if your spleen will be displaced. If it is, or if I feel it, um, that can be indicative of splenomegaly. You're fine, you can, you can lay down, perfect. Now the spleen in adults is palpable in about only 5% of the population. Take a deep breath in. And I'm not feeling any part of that. So that would be considered a, a normal finding that I'm not able to palpate your splenic edge. Next, um, I'm just going to go over two signs that can be indicative of something abnormal within your abdomen. Um, throughout my assessment, you didn't complain of any pain or tenderness, so I doubt we will experience that as well. But this would be a sign for um, us on the clinical side. side to inspect for cholecystitis, which is inflammation of the gallbladder. So it's called Murphy's sign whenever we get a positive one for someone experiencing this cholecystitis, along with some other clinical signs or symptoms that the patient is complaining of. So what I'm gonna do is go in this right upper quadrant, kind of right above the level of the umbilicus, and you're gonna take a deep breath in, and then exhale. No pain or tenderness with that. Someone with cholecystitis would be experiencing that. And then we would consider that a positive Murphy sign. Next, I'm going to go to McBurney's point, which is in the right lower quadrant. It's about two centimeters away from the iliac process. Um, and if I drew a diagonal line from the umbilicus to the iliac process of your hip, um, I would go about two centimeters up. That's called the McBurney's point. The appendix is located also um, right in that area. So if I'm going to go palpate on it or, yeah, palpate on it, you would experience some pain or tenderness. You would even be kind of um, ridging forward because of the pain or tenderness. Um, so like that, I was saying, if so, at the McBurney's point, if someone is experiencing appendicitis, that would be very tender to them. So I'm gonna find the area on this process. Perfect. No pain or tenderness there. Okay, perfect. Well, that concludes my abdominal assessment. Thank you so much for um, participating in this with me. I'm gonna scan the room one more time. You can still lay just like that. Or you can pull your shirt down, doesn't matter. Oop. Okay, so nothing there. Thank you very much. And we are on vacation, so it's a little bit smaller room, but it works. Thank you.